So I've been on a long spiritual sojourn since Delphi, so many things, and I've just spent the Eclipse Tunnel working through an ancient hermetic ritual of initiation to see what it would bring me, and it has brought me so many beautifully calm and wonderful frequencies. It's been a joy and a pleasure, but it also brought me some other energies which I'll let open as they open. So, hello everyone. Did you miss me? <laughs> I missed me and I missed all of you, but it wasn't something I could do. The messages were being withheld. It was about a need to go inside and outside, micro, macro, and back again, to witness and see transformations philosophically, because that's the ultimate goal, is to re-philosophize your world, to have control over your fate and your destiny, working with source. See, look. <laughs> The spirit, you're being supported in your birthright when you work to your highest good. So I wanted to begin by just reminding everyone, the link will be in the description box below, but we've been sitting on a secret at La Fruma for a very long time. It's our little secret birthright to you. There are hidden images with additional poems. And the article shows you the hidden image of a ship that goes across two cards. And it showed you the cards they're in and it showed you a silhouette version so that you could really see what you were looking for. And that was posed on the solar eclipse. And at the end of the article, it shows you this image Brissingarmen, which is also hidden across two cards. Can you find it? Can you find Brissingarmen? We're going to give the answer on the new moon in Scorpio. And then with each new moon, so when the Scorpio comes along, we will set another silhouette for you to find in your Lefruma deck. If you haven't got a deck yet, why not? <laughs> but if you haven't, there is a rune page that shows all the cards. So you can still join in with this. But bearing in mind that there are nine hidden images, this is going to be going on for a further eight new moons. So you could just give a little nudge to all your best friends to say with Christmas approaching, Yuletide, you'd like to receive the Lefruma deck as a gift. Just an idea. So, can you find Brissing Garment? I would suggest looking it up because that will help you um, have clues as to its origin, its purpose, where that actual image was found. Um, and known to be a kind of true Brissingarmen frequency energy image. And it will also point you in a general direction of maybe the cards that you might look at. It's a wonderful experience and it's an exploration of energies and that's growth. Now, before I begin, I'm also going to talk about water because I recently went to see a presentation by the wonderful Veda Austin, who talks to water, she puts objects in water, and she exposes water to particular environments, and then she flash freezes small amounts, and patterns appear. And when I was looking through, I couldn't get a ticket, but I was looking through her images, because they were all sold out, and I saw your 
I saw Destiny and I thought, I'm going to get to go. And somebody who couldn't attend sold me their ticket so that I could go. So it was a wonderful day. You can follow Vader Austin on Instagram. And one of the things that she reminded me of, which I talked about many years ago when I was in my sound healing studio, was how we program water. And so I have been programming all the water that I've been drinking since her lecture. And it is bringing the most amazing results to my entire being. Um, so currently, I'm looking at water as the divine source in all things. And I'm thanking my water, loving my water, and I'm thanking it for fulfilling all my needs so that I don't have, I can let go of that very destructive energy of neediness. It's a really big mountain in all our lives when we're just walking the stagnant labyrinth. So, I'm just going to sit with this water for a moment and I bring the water close to my heart because that's the space where we can demonstrate our future frequencies and I pour my love and my gratitude, my thanks into the water and into source for fulfilling all my needs. And I just sit with that energy and I can feel my heart open into that frequency. It's such a beautiful thing to do because it puts you in a good mind space. Have a little sip. So one of the signs that's been growing recently in people is a dehydrated mouth. It's when you're seeking, when you're close to a huge spiritual transformation. And I'm not thirsty, I'm drinking a lot, but there is a dryness to the mouth. It's like wanting to consume spiritual desires, spiritual healing. So, we have the Lifruma deck, and we also have the new incarnation of the Alchemy of Astrology deck, and it's now the Alchemy of Sound Astrology because it's become a much more musically balanced frequency deck. That's what I've been doing in my absence. I have been endlessly in a state of, wow, you see, I wanted to say ecstasy then, and there is a certain amount of ex ecstasy, but there was also exhaustion channeling the new format for this deck was a huge undertaking um, and it did wear me out um, partly because the back of every card now contains points and polarities which we will explore now but it was sort of like over 900 different energy forms had to be placed on these cards and they will change they one of the things they told me was i needed to be exhausted so that i wouldn't intellectualize or put cerebral thoughts on what was coming because this is hermetic in its origins in many ways but it's a new hermeticism it's revealing sacred truths to us and it's asking us to look at aspects within ourselves to transform our philosophical mission, our journey. So let's, <clears throat> let's begin by asking 
Poi Poi. <laughs> I'll explain Poi Poi when Poi Poi appears. But Poi Poi is my new best friend. <laughs> Who is this deck? Poi 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 Mandra is the mind of all things. So the universe is mental. It's a thought that is made physical. And it's trying to teach us that it's our thoughts and our feelings that make our world physical in the form that we witness it in. See, our world, planet Earth. It's just the most beautiful deck. I'm in love with them both so much. They talk with each other. They're complementary. They're sister decks. And in many ways, Lefruma alone was waiting for the incarnation because when they first came through, I had the rune deck and I was in Mexico. And then I had this huge download of the alchemy deck. But now that they're getting closer to the second deck being published, the songs inside them are just so sublime and beautiful. And it's interesting, I, I let go of all other decks because there's something within these that fit the new energies that are coming through from Poi Manda, Poi Poi. So this is the solar seeded year. And it's the note C. It's an anchor note that anchors you to earth. But it's also the note of release. When you pull up the anchor, you can transform your philosophical notions of how you live your life and how your life unfolds around you. And then you can re-anchor that energy in. And that's part of this process that I will be teaching you about these initiation columns that you can work with. But I need a little more time to settle into what I learned, what was given and what I gained, what I received from the exercise before I share it. So this is the walking baseline. The frequency at the core of your world, your earth, is what is, I feel like I've got muck down me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an open, focused reality. Opening your eyes to look at the reality of the world that you have created through your experiences and just what does that world look like? Is it a world full of chaos? Because part of a spiritual journey, an awakening, a soul journey, in fact, because I'm being given this information of there being different parts to initiating a true spiritual existence. And it begins with the soul path, awakening a soul journey to step outside the labyrinth that's out there. But as you go on that spirit journey, you will unbind the polarities that are hidden within these cards. Well, they're not hidden, they're written on the back, but they're present in the cards. So it's about a demonstration of what you have to work with. And as you unfold more and more of the polarities, you will witness more and more chaos in the world around you because Anything projected into our world is something we haven't brought in to our soul. And so there are many shadows that we're frightened of. We need to consume the shadows. They contain the nutrients for growth and transformation. But we mustn't fear things. That's a really strong message. So we have, as a polarity here, I am grounded or I am untethered. How grounded do you feel in your life? How untethered do you feel at the moment? Because the untethering, the desire to step away from a world outside us that feels cruel and aggressive 
is a preparation frequency for us to transform ourselves, our soul and our world so that we can reform it. So we have in the mm, in hard finding those semantic words or the words that don't have too much weight but they're kind of the extremes so in the extremes under I am untethered this is a Gaia phobe <laughs> it's so interesting that I channeled all of these energies and then I work with Kathy and Eve hello Kathy hello Eve to pin them down temporarily, to tether them, in fact. But because it was so much information coming through to me, when when you're in a channeled state, you don't remember things when you're channeling. Um, and that was part of the importance of the journey. So now that this deck has arrived, I mean, I've been shuffling the old incarnation of it, but the decks moved from 91 cards to 99. And so I wasn't dealing, even though they were written with the polarities and all these additional jigsaw pieces of information to work within ourselves. So I feel like I'm seeing this deck for the first time. I don't remember writing Gaia Phobe. <laughs> so if you're untethered, it's partly because you're not trusting. You're not trusting in spirit, poi poi, as I said. I will have more on poi poi. Maybe poi poi will come out and introduce poi poi to us all. So this is dissecting life, trampling on, <laughs> trampling on sacred spaces. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's that's like mass tourism that's definitely some kind of reference to all the people that were at Delphi <laughs> who saw nothing of the spiritual side the true under the veil of the mass tourism under the energy of people there was this other sound and the cicadas were keeping a barrier from connecting in to that deeply sacred space and I had to really attune myself and that was through water I was drinking the Castilian spring water which was the water that people bathed and purified in before visiting Delphi it was an incredible experience and for those that are new here and haven't seen anything um, I was sent to Delphi after while I was on Gozo releasing my brother's memory because he died there I was told to go to Gozo, I was told to go to Delphi. So I left Gozo, went through Athens, because of my journey around the world has, has been able to bring me energies that I wouldn't find alone at home. And so I was told if I went to Delphi and sang into the Omphalos, which is the psychic centre of the ancient Greek world, the navel, the oracle, I would hear myself singing back. I would hear myself on the other side of the oracle. And I did this and I did hear me, but I also heard everybody. You're all on the other side of the oracle. We are all part of that energy. It's a veiled version of ourselves that we need to connect with. So, wishing to be elsewhere in the cosmos. So, this again is when you can't trust your life on Earth, when you can't find space to have a beautiful and sacred existence here in this body, in this, this temple that was gifted to us by Poi Poi. So, walking your life, with your soul shut. I was going to say silent. I could hear the word silent. With a silent soul. You need to be able to transform that energy. To be present in this beautiful world. 
Yeah, it's chaotic, but we can change that chaos. We can transform anything if we work on our soul journey. And that's about, you know, the ancient Greeks, they talk about the difference between the bestial side of humanity and then the refined soul part that's closer to being with the many aspects of gods that ultimately leads to the spirit journey of the single poimander, poi poi. So I am grounded, earth seeded. We have to accept that this aspect of our beingness chose to come here. We came here to make peace with ourselves on planet Earth. There are lessons within the Earth's journey and they're bloody tough, difficult lessons. They really are. I have been through hell <laughs> to reach this point where I just feel such trusting, beautiful calm. So, the lays of the land, the ley lines, the tuning of the land, they've been transforming for about five or six years to my knowledge, and they've been warped and they've been in the wrong place. Ah, oh, and actually, I moved a ley line up here years ago um, that had started to move through houses rather than through the pathway that it was meant to go through. And it connected with a river, the Bourne, here. And this is a sacred earth walk. This is nowness. This is song lines. Do you want to tune in to the song lines that everybody's massed confusion and fears are leaving on the earth? Or do you want to tune into sacred song lines, renewed song lines, tunes of love, tunes of beauty to bring you somewhere else? So that's planet Earth. Let's see what else comes with this message. So two more cards. <laughs> this one won't leave me alone at the moment. The solar eclipse. So eclipses offer galactic opportunities. I should hold them up for longer. I'm sorry, you've not really seen these and they are brand new. And they are beautiful. They're full of so much magic on so many different layers. But they will challenge some traditional thoughts on astrology because we're talking about the astrology in this is how to connect to your other self through the veil and that has a different astronomy energy and it's been bothering me because well the cerebral researcher within me is uncomfortable with some things, but the point is, is I've learned through this initiation progress project that I went through with the solar eclipse to trust that these are hermetic secrets that wish to be revealed to all of us. They're not, they are secret knowledge, but the answers to all the secret knowledge is within all of us because we all have a higher self. We just need to connect and trust. So we have this galactic opportunities. This is a musical suspension. That eclipse tunnel energy creates a frequency that goes out of time. It's interesting, C, A, mm, a minor is that it seems to be a chord within the, this eclipse tunnel. I don't know whether it's in all, but we've got a and E here, which is a perfect fifth, and the world itself works on the energy of perfect fourths. So the eclipse tunnels opens a little bit more space for creativity, 13 frequency, this five and eight, uh, eight five. Allows space for something new to come in. So part of the journey is opening mutable 
energies, making space to receive new ideas and then working with those ideas to see how they philosophize into your current philosophical mission and then fixing the new philosophical mission into the world. And then we have cancer. So it's bringing you home to yourself, ancestral dwellings. There's a beautiful, sorry, the, the colors of this. I just had breakfast and I chose a plate <laughs> that was this color. because it was really drawn to it as a color frequency. So I'm gonna read the back while I'm holding this up. The polarities of the eclipse are I am open or I am closed. And it's interesting, you see, um, there's so many layers within. Oh, and there's my spirit fly. It's all over me. It's like an orb, but most people would be repelled by it. I've learned to love flies. They remove negative frequencies from us. So, as you go through the deck, the very early cards talk about they, they. And then at some point within the deck, the backs of the cards begin to talk about you, asking you to take responsibility for your actions, your decisions, your journey. And then towards the end, they become about me. And, and at the end, when we go to the higher alchemical um, frequencies, or other, I'm a bit off with higher and ascended. It's just about transformation, still you. So sometimes they become less negative because the polarities as you work them are shortening, you are less in the chaos and you're more in the side of structuring your life through love. So the closed energies here, still have this energy of being celestial, future aligning. And then it talks about how eclipses repeat in Saros cycles. So there's stuff that you can learn on these cards to help you understand how to move through things. Eclipse tunnels offer a fortnight out of time, but these Saros cycles, they repeat every 18 years, 11 days and eight hours. So then the same eclipse comes around and they move either from the North Pole where they're birthed down to the South or they move the other way. So certain eclipses may be newer in terms of historic times and others may be really ancient. You know, some started in around the year 1000. So, Open frequencies here, resetting. Eclipses offer us a chance to reset ourselves and awakening our breath. And breath is poimanda. It is this energy of working with your truths through poimanda. So this is centering on the new now. The new now that you're creating as you go through this journey of awakening and the invitation to the bolero of abundance. A bolero is a dance. So learning how to dance in abundance, a different tune in your world that you can experience and it's dimensional equinox points of sublime transformation. Just gorgeous. <clears throat> and then Cancer. So the polarities here are, I am individual or I am ancestral. So are you just existing in the codes that you were birthed with or are you transforming those codes? Are you transforming your DNA to be in your truth? There's things we inherit 
but they don't tell us who we are. We can make them tell us who we are, but they're not our truth. There's something here with the solar eclipse and the planet Earth that's also talking about the lunar eclipse because it's in the moment when the shadow of the Earth goes across. And eclipses can be either way around. It can be solar to lunar or lunar to solar. This one was a solar to lunar. And the lunar eclipse is still happening right now. So this is the first musical instruments. The old tunes played on old instruments. And this is haunting homesteads, family patterns. So that's the energies of the coding within us that haunt our lives, that stop us from transforming into this cardinal water energy. And this is the moon. It's ruled by the moon, Cancer. And in the alchemical process, this in the magnum opus, Cancer represents solution. <coughs> which is <clears throat> emotional <clears throat> osmosis. So if we look at the ancestral polarities, they can bring out the energy of being moody, the dangerous loser, easily emotionally bruised, and look, you don't have to look at this card as being, I've got sun in cancer. We all have all of the signs. They're all offering us things. And if you don't know the exact time of your birth to work out your houses, this can still work for you as the energy of house four, the energy of where you reside in yourself. So... Um, I need to turn it back up that way. I'll start reading the positive ones, mid-negative. So, wounded soul seeking endless sympathy. Is that how you walk your life? Do you go around seeking sympathy of others? I know I have. And that's part of being honest and vulnerable and open to just explain things to look at that energy. I've looked at that energy in myself and said no more. And I've transformed it. And you can do exactly the same. At the moment, you'll have to just work with my readings because the deck's not available, but you can get with Fruma and start the work. And then this will be ready soon. So I am individual, devoted. Devoted to you, devoted to your life, devoted to your world experiences in that house for energy, devoted to your home. This is galactic empaths. And it's the heart of deep love. Read no deeper, deeper, deeper. <laughs> it's the guardian warrior of home peace and it's the instrument of ancient love and family comforts you see that's the first musical instruments family connections community they're the tunes you should be playing but we have to play them on new instruments because they don't belong to the instruments of the past they're melodies they're truths they're frequencies but now it's time to sing new lays of the land, to retune the world that you walk in. So now let's add some Lefruma to this. I call that one with my elbow. <sighs> Needle, mend. This is the chance, this is a gift in the deepest, darkest depths of Nidhlvalir, the craftiest, most magical elves hammer and forge at the tiniest 
personal precious gift they can offer any soul the eye hole of a needle to rethread your life to create new embroideries this is the energy of stepping into free will we think we have free will but we're in the labyrinth the labyrinth is bowling balls at us we're the skittles we keep falling over this opportunity to transform your soul journey stops you being the skittle you get to decide how your world is created but it's look i mean it's not easy in many ways i've been on a three-year odyssey to get this calm <laughs> this stable and this content and happy and playful I'm in all of those energies. So with this wondrous pointed pin, all the cuts and wounds inflicted through life might be stitched back together. The alchemy of precision healing and curing. Mending all, correcting directions and stemming pains with invisible seams. It's so <clears throat> transformative. There's so much that we can do for ourselves and our lives, but it's a philosophical exploration. You have to throw away the box. Don't think outside the box. Throw the box of your beliefs about your world. Defenestrate it. Throw it out the window. Interesting that that came up. I did pass through Prague and that's where defenestration comes from. So let's just see what else. Feor. These are the fiery cosmic wormhole heightening ancient dragon beams. So Poi Poi in the alchemy deck and Nithogia in Lefruma is another aspect. It's dragon frequencies, divine frequencies, clothed in an understanding that we can work with to transform things, to just look wholly and singly, singularly at source. It's too much. You can't do that in your head. We need to see source in the fractured opportunities it's offering to us in the physical world. We need to look at just small parts to transform. And each time we transform something small, then we get the chance to look at something else. One of the big energies I've been looking at recently is, Eris is a very complicated energy, the energy of the goddess of discourse. But she's very much like Kali Ma, in that she's a destructive energy to rebuild from love. And because it's a frequency that we don't really want to embrace, then if she's not in us, if we haven't come to terms with the shadow aspect of that divine rage, then it's without us. And so it manifests all around us in the world around us. We have to control the world that we witness through our micro system coming to terms with all the different aspects of the great mind of the cosmos, Poimanda, Poi Poi. So this is Aether. We mend with Aether. And Aether comes in many different forms. I'm not going to go into that right now, but that's all part of the hermetic journey that they've taken me on to help give you messages now so that we can all transform our worlds because as that all aligns, then the peace and the love that we all seek in our heart becomes a reality. We make the world together. The dragon's breath fuels and drives and delivers sacred enlightenment. And that is the path. That's the path that you're on, sacred enlightenment. 
So one more card. Just to end this little reading as an introduction. Gar. This energy, the spear, the trove, is troving something to you. As you explore your philosophical notions, you transform your world. And it's, it's giving you the energy of Gifu, but it's showing you that you shift from the labyrinth to the soul path. It's an opportunity to move somewhere else. In the real world, it's a 3-3. Three, three. It's the energy of being present in the earth. That's the beginning of your journey is accepting that you, we all have a place to live joyously and lovingly in earth, in the earth that you create, not the earth that you found yourself in. Transform the earth you found yourself in. Sing new songs, transform, make everything new. So I'll be doing more readings as I move. I'm all over the place at the moment. So uh, I'll see you all very, very soon. Huge loving energy to all of you for embracing your pathway to transformation, seeking your personal philosopher's stone. More on that, I'm absolutely sure, will come. Well, say, beautiful people,